Thank you to the sponsor of this video, Daikin. Are you having a concern with a Daikin, Amana, or Goodman furnace? Are you seeing an EAF code? In today's video, I wanna go over what that code means, what you need to know about it, and what you can do about it to remedy an issue that you're having. Just know that that code does not mean that the board is bad. You do not need to send it back under warranty. We're gonna dive deep into what it means and what you can do about it. But let me say this, before we get into all of this, this video is meant for professional only. If you're a homeowner looking to fix your own equipment, this video is not for you. This video is for licensed professionals in the HVAC trade. But now that's out of the way, let's dive into this. Why are you seeing this code? What is the problem here? And to answer that, let's back up a little bit. As many of you know, we made the transition from 410A refrigerant to R32 A2L refrigerant. And being that it's an A2L refrigerant, we have a whole set of new ways of doing things. And one of those things is with any A2L refrigerant introduced to the market now, it will need to have a mitigation sensor. If you've got a furnace or air handler, chances are you're going to have a sensor somewhere located in that system. And that sensor is looking to sense a refrigerant leak. If there is one, it will send the system into mitigation mode. Mode. It'll bring on the indoor fan motor. It will do other things like turn off indoor air quality products and turn off the outdoor unit. It's all about safety here. And so because we have that sensor, your system is looking for that. If you buy a new furnace that is A2L compatible, it will ship A2L ready. It's going to be looking for that sensor right away. And I used to help contractors. And one of the calls that I would get from time to time is, Josh, I don't have a sensor. I just installed this entire system and I don't have a sensor. There isn't one with my brand new R32 coil. And I would, you know, tell them they're might be take this cover off and sure enough every single time they would then find the sensor so my message to you is if you just installed an r32 coil take the covers off there is a sensor located on that primary drain pan and you're going to have to run it down and plug it into the board on that furnace and so that eaf code that's what that code is that code is essentially saying that it's a communication error with the sensor and it's saying hey i don't see it here, there's a problem and it will not allow the system to operate. Now, if you installed this furnace, but you're reusing a 410A coil, then you need to tell that furnace that is looking for you to plug that sensor in, I don't have a sensor. Now, let me say this because things could change. You may watch this video in the future and the protocol or the way of doing things may change in the future. With most of these furnaces, you can go to the seven segment display and use the buttons below it, scroll the options to A2E and simply disable the mode of that sensor. You tell the furnace, no, I don't have the sensor under the A2E menu and you hit the center button twice and you back out of it. You then cycle power and that furnace will no longer be looking for that sensor. It's shipped out of the box if it's A2L compatible looking for that sensor. But what I'll say here is please read the instructions. I can't tell you how many times I've helped other contractors only to find the answer to their question on page nine. And so if you're seeing that EAF code, I would encourage you not just to go to that sub menu and disable that, but go into the instructions and at least go to the problem you're having. Go to that EAF code, read that section and make sure that you're covering all your bases. Cause again, things could change here in the future future, but currently that will help you with all the furnaces currently being sold A2L compatible because they all are looking for that sensor and you either have it and you haven't plugged it in or you simply need to tell that furnace, I don't even have it to plug in. Finally, I just wanna take a moment. Daikin is one of the sponsors on our main YouTube channel, HVAC Guide for Homeowners. But one thing I will just say about Daikin in general, obviously I might be a little biased. We were a Daikin dealer at my company, but whether you're selling a Daikin, Goodman, or a Mana product, or you're not a dealer for one of those brands, but you're simply trying to repair that equipment for a customer. One of the things I always 
always loved about Daikin is they don't put their products under a lock and key. You're able to get access to a lot of this information, even if you're not the dealer that installed that product. And so I would encourage you, make sure that you're set up with, if nothing else, their Daikin Tech Hub app. It's one of the apps that they have. And it's, I, I could do a, literally probably 30 videos on all the stuff that's in there. In fact, I have met with contractors and I've asked them, I've said, do you have the Tech Hub on your phone? And they'll say no. And I'll say, let me show you something. And I go through my phone, my app, and show them everything that's in there. And they immediately download it almost every time. And here's why. Not only can you find the answer to like, what is this code? What is this error message that I'm receiving? But if you're working on a thermistor, what should that resistance be it with your meter? If you're working on this product or that part, it goes through all of that. There's so much in there, including the service manuals with a lot of these codes. And a lot of the codes will have a flow chart that will literally tell you, here's how you fix that problem. Do this, did that fix it? go to the next step. And it gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how to repair that system, how to take care of that error message. And so by the time you see this video, maybe it'll be called something else, but again, reach out to your local supplier, get set up with that app. You will be amazed. The future is here. And Daikin wants to make sure that you have all the tools that you need to take care of our customers. Yes, I sound biased and that's because I am. I've worked with companies years ago that it was not the same vibe. The last thing I'll say is if you are working with these new A2L refrigerants, I've done a whole bunch of videos on it. I'll put a link to several of them down in the description of this, talking about R32, talking about A2L refrigerants and all the ins and outs. But I would just encourage you to make sure you're continuing to get more and more education about this stuff. More changes are coming. And if you're the person in town who is staying on top of these things, who is in the know, you will win. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one too. It's where I talk about a board that you can install with these systems and still reuse an old furnace. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button for more HVAC tips. We'll see you next time.